UH-1 Huey. Manufacturer, Bell Helicopter. Type, Utility Helicopter. Power Plant, one Textron Lycoming T-53L-13 turboshaft. Principal armament, two 7.62mm machine guns, 16 70mm air-to-surface rockets. Carrying capacity, 11 to 14 troops, or six medical litters, or 3,000 pounds cargo. Maximum cruising speed, 115 miles per hour. The Bell UH-1 Iroquois, better known by its nickname, the Huey, first flew in 1956 and is still in service today. Over 16,000 models have been built, the largest production run of any helicopter in history. And with numerous appearances in blockbuster films and television shows, it's become an American icon. The birth of the Huey came in the wake of the Korean War, a war in which the American Army learned that for rapid medevac and troop insertion, a faster, more robust helicopter was needed. To achieve that aim, the guys at Bell developed a radically new bird that pushed the avionics envelope. It was the first helicopter that the United States Army purchased that had turbine engines in it. And that was a big step going from a helicopter that worked off of reciprocating engines to a helicopter that had turbine engines in it. So uh, it was kind of like going from uh, your Volkswagen to your Cadillac. The Huey's capabilities were put to the test during the Vietnam War. By March 1970, the U.S. military operated more than 3,900 helicopters, and two-thirds of them were Hueys. The Huey is burnt into the memory, certainly, of any Vietnam veteran for the simple fact that the Huey was so many things to them. It was what brought them into battle, but more importantly, it was their deliverance from battle. If you were short of ammunition, what brought it in? A Huey. If you were wounded, what took you out? A Huey. As a medevac, it proved indispensable. Of the 390,000 American soldiers wounded in Vietnam, 90% were lifted directly to a U.S. Army medical facility. Many of these men survived because they were treated within what doctors called the golden hour. But saving lives was just one aspect of the Huey's role in Vietnam. As a troop carrier, it could rapidly insert up to 12 men in battle. And later in the war, it was heavily modified to fulfill an attack role. The Huey was the beginning and the end, the alpha, the omega of warfare in Vietnam. But if for the soldiers on the ground it was a case of love at first sight, for Huey pilots it was a case of love at first sound. The Huey noise is, is distinctive. It announces in some, some cases during Vietnam that here we come, which is always not bad. You know, to be deterred, you got to know you're being deterred. And the Huey coming after you, you may not want to do the second iteration of what you were about to do. But not everyone was deterred. The Huey still took plenty of fire, and with minimal ballistic protection, its crews were heavily exposed. Over 2,000 UH-1 pilots and crew lost their lives during the conflict, making it one of the deadliest jobs in the American military. Since Vietnam, the Huey has constantly evolved to meet new challenges. Its rotors, engines, and avionics have undergone countless upgrades, ensuring that the Huey legend will live on. It has a place in everybody's heart, starting with those Vietnam veterans, going to the folks that served in Europe later, served in the Middle East. We even flew Hueys during Desert Storm. So it's, it means something for the soldier. And I think for the American public, it means Army aviation. The Huey has stood the test of time. Service length is excellent, as is innovation, versatility, and fear factor. But lack of survivability keeps it out of the top two chopper spots.